Hello viewers! As I always like to point out, to run correctly and efficiently, every engine needs three basic things. Enough fresh air, fuel to go with it and, once the mixture is compressed, a strong spark to ignite it. Now when it comes to fuel, it's critical to have just the right amount of it, which is, among other things, regulated by its pressure. If it's too low, the engine will suffer from fuel starvation, causing multiple drivability issues. Which exactly, as well as what causes fuel pressure, well that's what we're going to find out right now. Let's go! As you may imagine, low fuel pressure could cause several issues, ranging from poor throttle response, low engine performance or stalling, to misfires and difficulties when trying to start the car. And of course, all of this is quite likely to trigger a check engine light on the dashboard, but let me explain each of these a bit more. All cars require proper fuel delivery to their cylinders for them to run properly. If you feel any lags in your car's pickup, there's a big chance that there is something wrong with the car's engine fuel pressure. Similar to poor throttle response, you might notice that your car doesn't accelerate smoothly. What usually happens is that when you put your foot down, the car picks up just fine at first, but only for its engine to start jerking and hesitating after a second or two as the revs go up. Low fuel pressure will also make it hard for you to start the car's engine. At the starting moment, the car requires a lot of fuel, and if it's not getting the right amount of it, it will probably not start. You might feel like it takes longer to start your car, or maybe it takes more than one try for a successful ignition. You might also hear some spluttering while trying to start the car. If the engine in your car stalls while running or at idle, it's a clear sign that you're having some problems with your fuel delivery. And this may be caused by fluctuations or sudden drops in the fuel pressure. Modern cars have a fuel pressure sensor that intelligently calculates if anything is going wrong with the fuel pressure. Generally, with a such a problem, you will get a P0190 code. So if there is a check engine light on the dashboard to find out what's causing it, you should read the trouble codes with a diagnostic scanner. Many people might not have turbos in their cars, but those who do have another way of knowing if there's something wrong with their fuel pressure. The turbocharger system uses air and pressurizes it to create a turbine-like effect on the engine, allowing it to push out more power. However, if you feel your turbo is taking too long to spool, there might be something wrong with the fuel pressure. Low fuel pressure in the fuel system will cause an off-balance in the air-fuel mixture and that in turn causes weak combustion. This can be felt as misfires on acceleration or even at idle. Sometimes this is caused by minor problems and, at times, it can be caused by something huge. The most common symptom of low fuel pressure is incorrect air-fuel mixture, which will cause your car's performance to drop drastically. If you feel that your car's performance is much worse than it usually is, it's time to check the fuel pressure. To be honest, anything between the gas tank and the engine can cause the fuel pressure to be low, so let's see what we have here. First is the fuel pump, which sits in the gas tank from where it transfers the gasoline toward the engine. Over time, or as a result of mechanical damage, the pump's internal moving parts may wear out, preventing the pump from generating sufficient fuel pressure and shifting enough gasoline. Next, somewhere between the pump and the engine, we have the fuel filter. Its job is to catch any contaminants, dirt, rust, the gas may contain before they reach the sensitive fuel injection system. But if the filter hasn't been changed for too long, it could get all clogged up, which obstructs fuel flow and causes a pressure drop. Coming down the line, so to say, it's the fuel pressure regulator which controls the pressure of gasoline inside the rail. And if something's wrong with it, the fuel pressure may be too high or too low, depending on what's happening. Now, the fuel pressure regulator doesn't fail that often, but it's still worth knowing it's one of the possibilities. While on the subject of rail pressure, I must mention the fuel pressure sensor, which monitors the said pressure. Based on that, the fuel pressure regulator adjusts the fuel pressure accordingly, which will not be done correctly if the sensor gives false readings. Then we have the injectors, one for each cylinder, and if any of them, for any reason, gets stuck in a wide open position, it could cause low fuel pressure in the rail. What happens is that too much fuel is pouring through it, not leaving enough for the rest. This, of course, will flood that cylinder and cause it to misfire, usually accompanied by corresponding error codes. Lastly, all these components, pump, 
filter, rail are all connected with pipes and hoses. These usually run underneath the car, which is a position that makes them prone to mechanical damage, especially if you drive a lot over tough terrains. A flow through a bent and compressed fuel line will be obstructed, consequently resulting in low fuel pressure. If suspecting the fuel pressure in your car is low, the best way to verify this is by performing a pressure test. For this, you'll need a fuel pressure gauge and some reference data about the correct values for your car. This can usually be found in the service manual or, if you don't have it, by searching on the internet. The procedure itself is not very difficult, but I must advise you to perform it only when the engine has cooled down. There's always a chance some gas will leak out during this and you don't want it to spray all over the hot exhaust manifold or something like that. So with that in mind, let's go! Start by locating the shredder valve, which should be somewhere on the fuel rail. Then, using the correct adapter, hook up the fuel pressure gauge to it. Next, have a helper crank the car while you carefully monitor the gauge, which should reach the operating pressure within a few seconds. Also, when the engine is idling, the gauge shouldn't go up and down too much. Lastly, tell your assistant to press the throttle and rev up the engine up to 3000 RPM. While this is happening, the fuel pressure shouldn't drop too much. If any of these steps fail, it's most likely that your engine is not getting enough fuel, which needs to be addressed ASAP. Now, at this point, you may be wondering if it's possible to drive your car even if the fuel pressure is low, especially if this is not causing too much trouble. And the short answer is no, that's not a good idea. Besides the fact that your engine may stall or lose power in some critical situation, say while trying to overtake a truck, it also continuously runs with lean mixture. As a consequence, the combustion temperatures inside the cylinders will be higher than they should be, especially under hard loads, which can and usually will damage the engine in the long run. And lastly, there's the all-important question of repair costs, which depend on what's causing the fuel pressure to be low. If you're lucky, and all it takes is to replace a clogged filter, this will set you back less than 50 bucks in most cases. Fuel pressure regulators and sensors are not overly expensive either, with their prices usually not exceeding $100. And because they are fitted on the fuel rail, which is in most cases easily accessible, replacing them is not too demanding either. It's much worse though if the low fuel pressure is caused by a worn fuel pump. The new one for most newer cars will take a couple of hundred bucks out of your pocket. And to make things worse, replacing it often involves removing the gas tank, which is time consuming and, if you're paying a mechanic, expensive. Lastly, we have damaged fuel lines. They aren't expensive on their own, but replacing them can be a difficult job, with various gaskets and couplings having to be replaced during this to ensure everything seals properly. So, there you have it. These are the most common symptoms and causes of low fuel pressure, as well as the ways to fix the issue. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. But if not, and your car is still not running as it should, something else might be causing the issue. So, to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site, mechanicbase.com, for more detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!